The National Guard is heading to South Texas to help deal with a surge of illegal immigrants. Governor Rick Perry says unaccompanied children account for about 20 percent of those crossing the border from Mexico currently. To justify the move, the governor called it a public safety issue, blaming illegal immigrants for thousands of crimes in recent years in Texas. Perry says uh, those adult criminals not connected to the innocent children, but he says Texans deserve protection. I will not stand idly by while our citizens are under assault and little children from Central America are detained in squalor. We are too good a country for that to occur. That is why today I am using my executive authority as governor of Texas and activating the National Guard. So at least 1,000 National Guard troops will be called up at a cost of $12 million every month. Attorney Jeff King, a former Marine judge advocate, now a criminal defense lawyer in Dallas. The, under the law, there's very little civilian law enforcement uh, capability for the National Guard. Isn't that true? As it stands, yes. Uh, what's going to happen is Governor Perry, along with the adjutant general of the National Guard, will get together and they will come up with the specific role of what they'll, the role that will be fulfilling down there at the border. And it's going to be up to them, typically for the law enforcement capacity, which they'll be fulfilling. Uh, it'll be much like any other law enforcement. And they'll be, uh, they'll be using use of force, not necessarily rules of engagement. They're not going to be shooting people. They probably won't be apprehending anyone or detaining anyone. It's mostly going to be referring them on where to go and, and fulfilling a support role for the guard member, or rather for the Border Patrol. So right. the Border Patrol can do their job more effectively. Now, of course, and this gets into a political realm, not a, a law enforcement one, but uh, the White House, uh, the, the president refused to send the National Guard down there. So right. the governor has the authority to do so under his state executive powers. Uh, but they would have to be raise their hands and be deputized, like you see in the movies, in order to act, for example, as a deputy sheriff down, or, or, or as, a, as a state trooper down in South Texas. Right, exactly. Governor Perry is essentially the... Uh, the, the commander-in-chief of the Texas National Guard, and he has the authority to do just that. And a law enforcement role is, is one of the roles that the National Guard fulfills, uh, as well as, you know, emergency um, endeavors and things like that. We hear the National Guard getting called up for floods and tornadoes right. and so forth, and it, disaster situations to kind of maintain order and provide manpower. So that's kind of what they're going to be doing. Even deputized, even raise your right hand, congratulations, you're a, you're a deputy sheriff in Hidalgo County now. Um, they may not be trained to be law enforcement officers. You've got a tank driver down there. He's not trained to be a law enforcement officer. Right, and that's part of the problem. I think that's why the role, even if they are um, given that law enforcement role, I think the role is going to be very limited and more of a support role, and so that uh, allow the Border Patrol to do their jobs more effectively. And so I would think that the Border Patrol is going to focus more on apprehending, detaining the bad guys, especially the bad guys like the drug smugglers and right. things like that, and the families, the children, just trying to get into the states, uh, they, they, I would imagine, would most likely be directed to the, the guard, the guardsmen to direct them where to go. Right. And, and, and as the adjutant general said, uh, we're going to be a visible presence and hope that simply by our presence that they're going to look across the border and right. go down the river and go yeah. somewhere else. Uh, this has happened before, 2006. Yes. The National Guard was deployed down there. And again, a very limited role. It was more... Uh, an eye on the ground to direct the Border Patrol guys where to go. Right, and a lot of times what they'll do is instead of, they won't even have guardsmen on the ground, and they'll just make it aerial ops, and they'll, be, they'll put guardsmen in the air flying back and forth and directing the Border Patrol where to go, which I think would be a very valuable thing to do. Right. Very quickly, what if there is a violent confrontation? Will the National Guard be prepared, armed, locked and loaded, and ready to respond? They will always be prepared and armed. I mean, they're still they're military service members. Um, the question it becomes, it, can they shoot? And the rules of engagement, as we know them, don't necessarily apply in this capacity, but the use of force does, just like any other law enforcement. I mean, they, uh, they are subject to the criminal law just like any other citizen, mm -hmm. and so the criminal law is what, what's going to apply to this. So it's a use of force thing, self-defense. You know, if, if the force is escalated by their by their shadow or their opponent, then they will escalate their force uh, to match that. Somebody shoots at a National Guard, they're going to get shot back. If, if deadly okay. force is used, then absolutely. Okay, okay. Thanks very sure. much. Putting it in perspective for us. We've got more to come here on Good Day.